It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, February 20th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is really wondering what the Phantoms are going to do for the rest of this season and how it affects the Flyers system moving forward. You, me, and a whole bunch of fans. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner, and you can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, the Flyers did have practice yesterday and um, Tyson Forster was there, which was good to see. That's he good. was in a non-contact jersey. And after practice, John Tortorella said that he'll play when he's ready. There isn't really a specific timetable, but um, I think this is like a good week for him to get back going and, and figure out where he's at. Yeah. I mean, the game that, that you would think they'd want him to jump into would be the Rangers on Saturday. That would make sense because that's, that's a, you know, that's a tough game and you, you want all hands on deck if you can get them. Yeah. I think, you know, that, that weekend back to back, um, is looming and i think that uh, it would be a good game for him um to to get back into the lineup um you know it was it was really interesting post practice uh, media availability for torts cuz i think he really continued his kind of openness that he did uh, after mm-hmm. the stadium series game I thought that he was pretty forthcoming and and thoughtful with his answers to questions. Um, He talked a little bit about Garnet Hathaway and, you know, what he's meant to the team so far and that, um, you know, that he's brought a little bit more than expected, even though the numbers may not be there, which um, I I just thought, you know, the little things he had to say there. Um, Talking about Nick Sealer. Um, you know, especially because they didn't really get to celebrate that goal as much because right. the Flyers lost the game. But, um, you know, now that a little bit of time has passed, you know, he was just really happy for him that he was able to to get that goal. And, you know, he's an easy guy to pull for. And that um, one of the things he did say about Sealer was that he was one of the best on the team at getting the puck to the net, like not scoring or contributing to the scoring play but like getting the puck from the blue line into the net front area and I was trying to think about that and I think honestly he's right in a lot of ways like you see Nick Sealer crashing into the zone quite a bit and then just kind of bouncing at that point Mm -hmm. and letting the forwards do their thing but I think in that way he's a pretty effective defenseman yeah I think there's truth to that I also think Zamula can do the same thing that would be my retort on the on the torts but yeah, I think there's some truth to that. Yeah, and and one of the other things we've talked about pretty frequently is, um, you know, potentially splitting up Sealer and Walker as a pairing, mostly because if they're going to potentially trade Walker, you know, you got to see where Sealer fits, and then if right. you're going to trade Sealer, where does Walker fit? Right. Um, or you could trade both of them, but I, I think that. You know, that is a valid question on our parts. And mm-hmm. and Torts has kept them together because as a pair, he thinks they're the Flyers' best pairing thus far. Well, and if they're the best pairing, they should be the second pairing then. If they're the Which best they are pairing. sometimes. Sometimes, but they haven't been the since Drysdale's year. So why aren't yeah, they all true. the time then? See, this is where I can't yeah. believe everything John says. Because you don't keep your best pairing as your third pairing. Yeah, and I think that Drysdale is still like they're they're trying to figure out where he fits in this lineup. And so, but, and without 
splitting up Sealer and Walker. And there's only so many other ways you can put the guys together. And that kind of, you know, pushes Walker and Sealer down the lineup as they try and figure this out. But I just thought it was really interesting um, that, you know, given everything and given how close we are to the trade deadline, are they keeping them together also to showcase them because they are at their best when they're together? Nobody's taken two. So I think, I think he's just pointing out. No, I'm just saying you can showcase each of them individually better because they are both individually, you know, I think that's a part of it. I also think he's coming out and saying this in defense of Nick Sealer to get Nick Sealer signed. That's what I think he's, he's trying to do here. So I think he's trying to sway public opinion. He's trying to sway management. I think that's the uh, the end game on that one. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's fascinating because he also said that he and Briere and you know everybody's talked to the players who could be potentially be traded at trade deadline. They're trying to be transparent with the players, like they are with the fans, and mm-hmm. um, you know, in terms of just putting everything out on the table for these guys, so there's no surprises for them, and just oh, as a good. sign of that's good communication. Yeah. I think that's fine. It's fine to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just doing it to show respect. But, you know, I think that all of this talking about Nick Sealer, talking about Sean Walker leads to the continued trade rumors conversation about Sean Walker. And on 32 Thoughts, you know, Jeff Merrick and L.A. Freeman talked about him and that there was sort of a, a meeting that took place in Toronto when the Flyers were up there. Uh, with Walker's agent and management yeah. and that, you know, that there's a greater possibility of him signing with the Flyers now. Look, if you're going to tell me it's going to be low fours to mid fours, I'm not signing them. I don't care if it's for one year at that at that amount. Like they have to start moving up. See, the one thing the Flyers have not done a good job is is with contracts. If you and it's not and you can't blame Chuck Fletcher because Chuck didn't. Chuck is not in charge of all the contracts that have ever been signed with this club. And I think Owen Tippett's is the one that I say, okay, I really get it. But you can start looking down the list of some of the other ones. And again, there has to be a timing of when you think Mitch Koff's going to get here and you're going to turn the corner and you're going to have as much cap space as possible to be as good a team as you can as possible based on whoever also will come up. So you're going to, you know, you have to envision you need, three or four to five players with low salaries and you're going to need those other players that are going to get higher salaries. And Mitch won't be one of those guys to start, but he'll be one of those before you know it, but you're still going to want to go into free agency and that's me, you know, and dip in and get, and, and still even probably upgrade on defense even then. And that's where this all comes into play because again, you look at the age of Sean Couturier You'll even look at Travis Sandham at that point and reevaluate. He's not an old guy, but you're going to reevaluate. All those things get reevaluated at that time, and and a lot of it doesn't match up now. So, like, if you let's say Walker says, if it's a three year deal, I sign, and they do it. Well, that complicates things. Then it complicates for players yeah. that can come up. And again, I don't think four and a half is a good number for him. He he's proven it. For one year, and really, to be honest, I feel like in the second half, he's not quite as good as the first half. He's still good. He's a good defenseman, don't get me wrong, but he's not scoring as much. There's not, a, you know, I, I've seen a few more turnovers. I think you'd agree with that. And so yep. I would I would give him 3.75, and i give it to him for two years, and that's it. That would be yep. the max, but I really would not want to do that, to be honest. But that would be my, if I had to do it, if, you know, ownership says, like, I'm the cap guy, ownership says do it, then that's the number I give him. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't want to overpay for him either, especially given the wrist and complication here. Correct. Where you can't really move him, uh, given no, injury I mean, status. And he already makes too much, and you can't eat salary on him. I'm sorry, but, like, I don't want to retain salary on Rasmus wrist when we have so much other retained salary, and you want to be hitting your stride in two years. Um, in terms of the cap. And I, I just don't think that's possible if you retain more money. Yeah. If you buy him out, the number's not great. And and that runs at least as many years as Kevin Hayes' contract. 
might even be one more. And if you don't, and let's say you eat another million, 1.1, let's say, to get it to four, well, now you're talking about what's Hayes three more years at 3.5, something like that, or at least two. And now you're adding to that. Now it's 4.6. So now whatever the cap goes up, pretty much you're, you're back at standstill. And, and here's the thought. And I understand this thought. If we could do that retention and we can get rid of Risto and we're keeping Walker, then the money's a wash. It might be you're over probably overpaying for Walker at that point, just so you can get rid of Risto and feel like, you know, you got the right guys contributing. And I don't think that's a good, a good strategy. Even if it's a, even if it's a wash, I don't think it's a good strategy because now you've just overpaid someone else to get rid of your previous problem. Right. And it doesn't, solve your glut of defensemen problem that you have either and you don't get anybody any chances who's below them in the depth chart like nobody gets a shot and so then if you're a defenseman like do you want to get drafted or signed by the flyers no you don't because you're not going to get to play like that's just what it comes down to and it depends if you're a really high-end one that's going to be in the league in two years maybe not you know the regular that take four years. Yeah. I still think they'd be okay going to the flyers, but you make a point. If you ever got in the yeah. position where you can get one of those top, top guys. Yep. You might not want to do it or in a trade. Yeah. 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 So lots more to talk about on that front. And we will of course do that. If anything changes or the flyers make any moves here in the meantime, uh, the phantoms had a light week, but Uh, This gives us the opportunity to talk about, you know, what are we doing with the RFAs and UFAs for the Phantoms this upcoming offseason? And we will start talking about the week that was for the Phantoms coming up next. Get all the buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams like the Sixers with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just imagine if you bet on one team in the, in the All-Star game hitting over 200 points. <laughs> um, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. On tomorrow's show, we will be previewing the matchup against the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, Torts talked about that as well, that he recognizes that it might be a trap game and they've got to get as prepared for that team as they would any other. So um, hopefully that will be the case and we will talk about that and answer your mailbag questions on the show as well. So email us at LockedOnFlyers at Gmail. You can post a comment over on our YouTube channel, or send us a message on Twitter. So the Phantoms this week uh, only had one game. Uh, I mentioned this last week that there was a rescheduled game. They were supposed to have had two, but there's really only the one. And it took place at the same time as the stadium series game for the Flyers. So not a ton of eyes on it uh, from the Flyers world per se. But I'll yeah, be fair although they did, there might have been a few diehards. Yeah, they did sell out the arena. So yeah, uh, I mean, if you're there, but I mean, I'm talking TV. Yeah. I'd say TV, <laughs> you almost have no chance. No, no. Uh, the the fandoms played Syracuse. Uh, they lost two to one uh, in this game, and uh, c- gets them at seventh in the division. Still, they're still chasing Springfield and Charlotte. Phantoms have games in hand on those teams, but. There's only 26 games left in the season. You're running out of time, really, to make up that ground here. And and you have to play pretty consistently um, in in order to do it. And that's kind of like part of this conversation we're having here. Uh, In this game, um, Felix Sandstrom was sick. So they uh, had to call up uh, Nolan Mayer uh, to back up Parker Gahagan, who wound up playing in net for the Phantoms in this one. Uh, They played Syracuse. Phil Myers is on Syracuse, so that was nice to see him. Uh, Good old Phil. We saw him uh, in Tampa a couple weeks ago when we were short on guys. Yeah, he played. Yeah. So 
Um, interestingly, all three goals in this game were scored on the power play. Hmm. Uh, uh, nobody could get a five on five goal in this one. Um, both goalies, I think, played really well. That was part of it. Uh, Gahagan had 24 saves on 26 shots. Um, both teams wound up with 26 shots on goal by the end of the game. And the only Phantoms goal that took place, uh, Rhett Gardner scored. It was a redirect uh, net front on a really great play, actually, by Bobby Brink. Um, okay. a really nice move to be able to uh, dish the puck net front for, the, for that deflection um, on the power play. And that power play unit looked pretty good, I would say, overall. Um, you know, they just only scored one goal in that game, but they didn't have a ton of opportunities either. So, um, you know, the problem is they let in two power play goals by Syracuse and that was the game. That's the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame here because like, if you could justify Ali Lixell's existence with the flyers right now, I'd be like, okay, you know, there's nothing the fans can do, but he's not playing. And if you know he's not playing, yeah. why is he continuing to travel with the team? I'm happy he got to warm up in the uh, in the stadium series. Don't get me wrong, but you know, at the end of the day, the team needs him to play. If he's just gonna, if he's just gonna get scratched, I mean, it's just it, it's a situation that I don't think is ideal. I will say it like that. Yeah, and you consider all the amount of time that Ali Lixol has spent away from the Phantoms, right? He's um, he's only got 33 games played with the Phantoms this season, and he still has the highest points per game of anybody on the Phantoms at 0.85. Uh, nobody else has matched that in the interim since he's been off and on with the team. Um, and I, I just find that, to be frustrating and fascinating at the same time. It is. Time. I mean, and look, as the player, yeah, he's making more money because he's drawing an NHL salary when when he's up with the big club, but and he's happy to see his friend Sam Erson. and I've seen them doing a lot of chit chat, and so that's good for him. But you know, at some point, guy needs to play. Yeah, I think so. And um, with the team, you know, Tanner Luzinski is injured and, yeah. and is out. Garrett Wilson, who you know, frustrates the heck out of me because he takes too many penalties and gets in too many fights for my taste. Um, despite the fact that he can actually play the game. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just made their offense suffer quite a bit. And I think that having Ali Lixell would certainly help mitigate that situation. Yeah, no doubt. And probably would help lengthen them and give them two good lines instead of one good line. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, you know, it, it's, it's just so tough because I, I understand what they're trying to do and they're trying to simplify their game because the lineup isn't what it could be, but also like, I, I just think guys that should be doing more from a points production perspective aren't, and even the guys that have taken steps forward on that front, it just, it's not enough because they just don't have all the pieces there. And um, I think that that sort of leads us to these conversations we're having about, you know, we just talked about like who on the blue line side of things is getting a shot with the flyers. Right. And, and it, you know, listen, everybody's a pro, but there is a point where if you'd given somebody like Adder a couple of games with the big club, it would do a lot. And that would also, you know, save the flyers from having to go into some of these weird situations or less than ideal situations, but they have so many defensemen. They're not doing that. Right. Maybe after the deadline that will occur, but even look, even teams like the Maple Leafs, they're using way more of their farm system than the flyers actually are. And, you know, and sometimes it's necessary. And sometimes like, you know, again, it doesn't always have to be Bobby Brink or Lixell coming up. You could just bring somebody up. And just say, hey, you know what? We got this temporary injury. You'll be up for a couple of games and then you'll be down. You can do that. You actually can rotate players. And sometimes you will get more mileage out of those players for doing it. But, you know, I know it's easy for people to look at the roster and say, well, who would you do that to? There's nobody that's earning their, their call up. But that's not really true. I mean, Cooper Barodi, we've said all year, like this guy is a decent player. And if you gave him a couple of games at the NHL level, he's never going to hurt you. Never, ever. As an example. Right. And 
And he's the guy who's the closest to Lixel in terms of points per game. Right. right. He's the Phantoms leading scorer with 37 points in 46 games. And he's on the first power play unit. He's always in the thick of it. Yep. And, you know, if you're if you're writing off other guys or you're rightfully saying Samu Tuamala, it's just not your time yet. You're like, you're good. We right. believe in you. We're right. just waiting till next year to give you that right. shot. Like throw Marodi a game. Yeah. Right. Um, bring Ronnie Adderd up on the blue line side of things, you know, even bring up Adam Jennings. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, they wanted to I, throw in a guy for, like there. I said, yeah, the stadium series, Jennings would have been able to fill the role. No question about it, but you know, yeah. they want to do that. So they play Mark Stahl. That's fine. And you know, we'll see, we'll see if, what the deadline does to clear that out. But again, you know, these guys are humans and they're all looking for that little bit of pumping up. And really, Lixell's been the only guy that's sort of taken advantage of it. But even he's not really getting to play much. So it's like, you know, you do have to sprinkle this in. No matter how good a team is, you should always call up some guys when there's opportunities, especially with injuries. And they've had opportunities, the Flyers, no matter how good they are and their record is. Yeah. So uh, coming up next, we are going to talk about some specific guys that are RFAs at the end of this season and a few UFAs as well. And just say, OK, now what w with them? Because uh, it's important to start having those conversations with 26 games left. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got killer deals on last minute tickets, and with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting excited for all the fun you'll have. My favorite parts of the Game Time app is that it's great for getting notified about those flash deals. Plus, you can get that all-important view from your seat. They've got deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even up to an hour after it starts. So it's the place to find your last-minute seat. Also, the tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. Russ, is there time left in this season with 26 games left for anybody to make an impression that they haven't already? <sighs> That's a great question. I think the only one that could do it is Brink because they want him to do it. Not that they don't want anybody else, but I think their opinion of anybody else is going to pretty much be the same. And so even if Adder goes on a tear or Ginny doesn't give up a goal like on the ice the rest of the year, year I don't think it's going to be a necessary automatic call up. So I think Brink is the only one that has that ability and Lixell, who's already been getting called up. Beyond that, I just don't see it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. And I, I think, you know, as far as making an impression goes, like not just for call-ups, for, for what they think of him and what their plans are for this player for the remainder of the season. Well, uh, there could know. always be improvement for that. So, you know, the, I think for Adder, it's important. I think for Yinning, it's important. They're the only two that I really feel like could be up next year. I know people are going to yeah. argue about that, but I don't really look at him. You know, Denoye is too far away. Uh, Allison won't be a flyer. You know, I don't think Andre's ready. I think Grands could, but he's not going to get the chance. He's just, there's too much standing in his way. So, you know, Andre could finish out strong and he'll get a look in camp and everybody would be like, yeah, he's, He's getting real close, but like if we talked about some of those other things, like where's he actually going to play, right? Right. Well, so in terms of guys coming up that'll be RFAs this year, uh, Bobby Brink is obviously number one on that list. And 
you know, they're a hundred percent, I believe going to qualify him. And, you know, yeah. the, the intent is to have him around. I would say I'm like 95% sure about that with Adam Yinning. I think they believe in him as well. No, I think they do. Uh, yeah. I, I just think like Wade Allison, uh, I don't no. know. And yeah, uh, Mason Millman's a no. And Wills Molek, yeah. the weirdest signing, um, also a no. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a no too. Like how much, I mean, I, I feel bad for him. He's not a bad player. There's just no right. spot for him. That's right. Funny. Right. Uh, it's, it's just an odd decision that they made, uh, I think. Yeah. But no harm, no foul, I think, in the long run. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think, you know, of, of that. Well, in Sandstrom, of, too, he won't be retained. Well, he's a UFA. So. Oh, he's a UFA. Are, I thought he was an RFA. Sorry. But no, they're not going to re sign so him. Let's say, let's put it that way. Correct. So, but those are your five RFAs, right? So. Yeah. I believe, you know, the pecking order is Bobby Brink, Adam Yinning, and then. Uh, it's a puddle of nose for right. the rest of of those three the ufas yeah felix Sandstrom is number one on that list i believe um but he hasn't done anything this year to say you're the you're the absolute number three goaltender here uh right. and um I, it's unfortunate but i i think that's that's true and i think that there really is a lot of um, weight being put on Kolosov being able to come over and start developing. Yeah, there's a lot here. of hoping, and you do hope, and you hope that the conditions are right where he can. Uh, I'm going to just come out and say it too. I mean, getting Cal Peterson killed it for Sandstrom too. And yeah. it's not like Cal Peterson's really adding anything if we really look at it. His numbers nope. are pedestrian. Yeah. There's just no way around it with the contract situation. Like it, yeah. Peterson was going to be that next guy up. And so um, definitely going to wish Felix Sandstrom well, <laughs> because yeah, I, I like I've really liked him, but yeah. Um, yeah. I just think, you know, he's the odd man out here. Um, Tanner yeah. Lazinski has spent a significant amount of his time injured. So I just like, as much as I like him as a player and I think there could have been a spot for him, I think the injuries maybe just made the team less interested in giving him a shot. Yeah. If I'm the Columbus Blue Jackets, if he becomes a UFA, I sign him. Yeah. He was a star at Ohio State. I'd sign him. Because yeah, I do think I he could do so. something. He's got to get past the injuries. I think he, there was a time where I feel like um, he was going in the right way. I think there's still something there, but I'm not going to kill the Flyers, if, you know, for not signing him. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. The other two UFAs are Cooper Marodi, who I would do everything to resign him with the Phantoms and keep him and, and give him another two way deal. Yep. Um, and then Victor Mate, I think, is also an interesting uh, entity. And I think it's going to depend on if Mate has been happy or not in Lehigh Valley. And I have no insight into that. I don't either. Uh, and if he gets a pro chance, then he's going to He's going to take it. Yeah. yeah, it's but it's like if he doesn't get a pro chance elsewhere, would he stick around? Because I, yeah, I think it's been great then. to have him around. Yeah, but I just have no sense of whether he's happy or not. So um, I think that's a giant question mark. But I, I do think that there could and should be some significant turnover in Lehigh Valley and make next year's team more of a, a true development team. And you know, then it nice. what, like, it really, what it should have what it should have been this year and it wasn't. Have been. No, no, they they loaded up the uh, the team with veteran uh, you know offensive players that clogged things up. I I felt like and I felt like some guys weren't just getting enough regular time as a result, and I don't think it helped their you know getting them in you know their development going the right way. So I this has not been a good year so far for the Phantoms and all of that. Still doesn't mean a couple of guys haven't, you know, made strides. I, I still think those three defensemen that we talk about are still doing well. Could they be doing better? Yeah, that's probably a, an argument there. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, I just really, really hope that they can figure things out in these remaining 26 games to the point where they have more of a 
a solid game plan to work on the Phantoms as a strong developing team and get the right veterans in there and around these guys to give everybody the best shot possible. Yeah, because, I mean, the ideal situation is, you know, having four or five guys that are, you know, going to be your future that you can call up at any time. Yep, absolutely. Well, they've got three games this week to start that journey of the 26th. Yeah. Um, Wednesday, they are at Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Saturday, they're at Charlotte. And Sunday, they're at Charlotte. So a back-to-back in Charlotte. That is going to be a really tough couple of games there. Yeah, that'll be a big test. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, we'll be back next Tuesday to talk about all that. And, uh, you know, again, as we're inching more toward the trade deadline, how all of this could affect these guys in Lehigh Valley. Thanks again for making us your first listen today. We'll talk more about the trade deadline. We'll have a mailbag and we will get into Flyers versus Blackhawks. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So if you've got mailbag questions you want us to answer on the show, you can send them to us via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology. S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Have a great day, everyone.